I wanted to welcome you um, to uh, our conference on Reinventing Local TV News. The fallout is continuing over um, the Sinclair Broadcasting efforts to um, get their local TV anchors um, to attack uh, what they're calling fake news and the growing influence of places like Sinclair um, in, local, in local markets. Um, but on a positive note, and I think this is very important for what we're going to be trying to do here, um, there was a new study released um, by a foundation that shall not be named, but which is the Knight Foundation, um, is, uh, is uh, showing that unlike newspapers, local TV news um, is actually thriving across the country. So one of the things we were talking about beforehand is that people often talk about the death of newspapers, the downsizing of newspapers, and what that means for communities and for accountability, and that's an issue. But it's also true that most people get their news these days from local news. And local news stations, as we see here in Boston, with a very vibrant market, can be a very powerful force um, for good in communities, both bringing them together, holding places accountable. Um, but they do face these challenges. Um, and as Knight has found, and I think we all agree, um, local TV news needs to be more innovative. It needs to appeal to new viewers, new audiences, and really find ways to deliver its stories in the most effective way. The topic of millennials, because we have a lot of them in this room, how do you win them over? Are you ever gonna get these people to sit down and watch the 6 p.m. news in their homes? If we knew the answer to that, we would have probably implemented it already because we've been grappling with it for a long time. You do have this very difficult challenge, and I don't think there's any sign that, that millennials or, or even people older than that uh, are going to suddenly adopt the uh, habits of their parents. Our money is made on the group we've already been reaching, and to try and to go try to go really young alienates this group. My joke about it at CBS was talking about the audience, not our own colleagues. The people who are keeping us alive are killing us. What we need to do is invent a bunch of new food trucks, and then through those food trucks, the restaurant will get better, and the people who are at the restaurant will kind of quite realize why they like it better, but uh, they still keep going. We see a lot of focus on the nonprofit news sector, doing sort of small kind of grassroots. Uh, uh, innovation experiments across the country um, and usually those are started by a former news person um, they're very understaffed they're very strapped and then you look at every major city and significant town and they have news stations which have buildings and like 401k plans and uh, you know very substantial news organizations in all of these places and um, you just wonder could there be more kinds of innovation labs within local TV stations. The business reality is that um, advertising is challenged because yeah. it, it is literally gone this way. Um, we used to just compete with three or four TV stations, a couple of newspapers and all that. Competing with newspapers is actually quite easy now by comparison given all of their well-documented problems. So ad advertising revenue in uh, Boston was here in 2000 was the high water mark and it's here now and if we have a political year it goes here so the, the profitability of all television stations has been contained uh, I want to make this as informal as possible as Bill can attest to I could talk all day on this topic there are four really important considerations as we think about uh, where the local news industry is in general and what it means for our relationships with audiences first and foremost Audiences love TV. They've never consumed more TV than they consume right now. But TV is no longer TV. It's not just what happens on a program or schedule. It's all the television content that flows across multiple screens. So uh, clearly audiences are still very much positive about that relationship, but the relationship's evolving in significant ways. We also know that audiences will reward great storytelling. We have to get to a certain bar to convince that audience to consume video content. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a linear fashion, although a large share of it still is, and that's both a problem and an opportunity for the industry right now. We simply haven't migrated enough audiences and even enough of our best audience to digital platforms. And there's some really endemic reasons and structural reasons for that. The third really important takeaway is that there's a tremendous amount of trust for local news. In fact, it remains the most trusted source of news in America today. And that tends to be pretty invariant, but as you see some of these other sources, 
Facebook is has about a quarter of the trust that local news does today. And that was based on research we did about a week before Facebook broke um, in terms of the latest story on Cambridge Analytica. And then finally, local news delivers a connection to community that's second to none. And technology is going to help us do that more efficiently and more effectively, in particular around the geo-targeting and the delivery of content, just based simply on zip code to provide the kind of news and information that's most relevant for you in your day. One of the challenges that I put to my students was to cover a story and to cover it in a way that you think is experimental. So we're gonna take a look at some of those things and kind of get their take on it. So right now we're waiting for Jonathan to come to his bus stop. We're at the corner of Shawmut and Mass Ave. We drew a lot from Vice News, uh, for better or worse. Um, we thought it was really cool to have the reporter be in the story. Uh, we also um, added in this cool graphic with um, their bus route um, alongside their actual video from the bus route with a route that they were taking. The first half is kind of more cinematic, but I mean, I think the first thing we aim to do was like no reporter. Um, it, it is a bit text heavy, partially because of translations and partially because we want people to understand what's happening. Once we conducted the interviews, um, we just felt like the subjects had such like, strong words that they could just carry the story. So we just really wanted to give them the power of their words. From the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras campus. Estoy en tercer año, eso es junior. Shevu is a short documentary that we made focused on a roller skating rink on the border of Mattapan and Dorchester. Our goal was just to paint this portrait of a place that has become a central location for a community for many, many years. This is the only place that I've been to in my life that I would, that I would feel empty without. Yeah, I remember years ago being in Mexico at a, a rural uh, farmer's market, and stand after stand, they all had mangoes. And I thought, if somebody brought bananas to this thing, they'd make a fortune. And I feel that way about uh, local television news as I flip around from channel to channel. I often feel like I'm just seeing the same product on a different station, but no real differentiation. So uh, a couple of thoughts come to mind. One is um, this idea of format experimentation uh, in, in, in terms of, of length of stories, or even you know, on a given night, if there's some big thing happening, give the whole newscast over to it. Um, I also think a, a thing that local TV news has the potential to do really well, and even better than they do now, is take advantage of, of being live that there's, there's an electricity and a, an animation of live TV that you don't get from anything else. So live interviews, for instance, which uh, local news is rather reluctant to engage in for time reasons. Um, those are some thoughts as to how to kind of break that mold um, and, and then differentiation within the market so that not everybody is doing literally that same uh, news, weather, sports format at the same time, literally. A couple months ago, we <laughs> did a research project with Seth, and, and one of the things that came back uh, was that uh, we were not telling people what they needed to know to get their day. It was a morning news project. So was, we were not telling people what they needed to know to get their day going, uh, which means what we were delivering wasn't relevant to them. Uh, and you know, we made a slight adjustment that you know our show was going to be about helping you get your day started. The promotional campaign was that way. The content was deliberately geared to be that way, and the numbers improved. I'm not sure what relevant means because if you had told me yesterday about you know I'm going to tell you a story about Shay Vu, I'd say that has nothing to do with me. But then when I watch the story. I connect with something in there, and then it feels relevant to me. Or the fire and revere. We try to tell that story so that you connect with it, and you learn something from it, or you experience something from that fire that makes it feel like it is relevant to you. That's the whole, that's what we do, is put the stories in and make them so they're relevant to you. So when you feel like that's not happening, then we're not doing our job as well as we should, but if we do it well, you don't have that feeling. The trends are either people wanting to watch something that's 15 to 20 seconds long or 5 to 10 minutes long. And so it, we frequently will do stories, that if it's going to be for broadcast, it's going to be usually a, a quick turnaround as opposed to if it's, if it's digital. We're using multiple cameras. We're using more cinematic cameras like the one you have back there. And you know, not, so it's, it's not only 
how you produce it, but how you're going to shoot it. What's the, what's the look going to be? And 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 they it seems to seems to resonate. Um, I also want to say that those stories you guys did had all had unique looks, and we've talked about these things today about how they're used to consume. But you know, 20 years ago, not everyone had a video camera. Everyone has a video camera, a really good one in their pocket. And so this, in a sense, I mean, for me as a photographer, this is my competition right here. And so I think what you guys did was you tried to make your stories look unique. And I think that is really, really important because you have to set yourself aside from just the viral video that was shot like this. It drives me crazy, sorry. And so <laughs> I, I think that's, that's equally important, digital and broadcast. I think something that's really starting to work very well for um, local television is the collaboration with the audience that you're seeing more and more, um, with them reaching out to kind of the local people, like send in your pictures, send in your photos, send in your video. Um, I think it's a very exciting thing for a lot of just local people to say, oh my God, did you see my video? It was on like the Channel 7 News this week, or it was on the Channel 5 News tonight. So what we did is we chose evening newscast in the top of 15 stations across the country, and then we uh, analyzed, uh, I think it was 75 half-hour newscasts to try to produce some data about how stories are being told. So just in terms of story length, because uh, people were talking about that, um, our analysis found that about, uh, more than half, 56% of the stories ran one minute or less. Uh, consistent with findings that have been observed by researchers since the 1980s, crime continues to be an overwhelmingly you know, large share of the, uh, the topics. I just want to thank everyone for being here today. This is an important conversation, as our director said at the beginning this morning, and we hope this is just the beginning and that we can be getting back together at some point in the future, maybe not with all the answers, but maybe with more answers than we have today. So thank you so much for being here.